Hello everyone, and welcome to this new video tutorial for Maverick Render. In this tutorial we will introduce you to our new proprietary displacement mapping system, which has been re-engineered from the ground up and brings major advantages over classic brute force displacement solutions. The main benefit of our new displacement system is that it always capture quite literally all the detail in the input texture map. There's no need for resampling or refinement settings. Our displacement will always capture every single detail present in the material. The second major benefit is that the memory usage is negligible and independent of the level of detail, which is of key importance in a GPU render engine. Our old brute force approach was a memory hog, especially when used in large surfaces or with a high level of detail, which the new system has no problems with. Let's go through the new displacement system in Maverick with a few simple examples. Let's begin with a plane onto which we will drop a displacement map from the library. In the pattern area we will find some good examples. Let's pick one we like and drop it directly on the object. Maverick will prompt you for the slot you want to plug the map to, where we will select displacement height map. Keep in mind that when working with displacement it is necessary to use the reload geometry toolbar button for Maverick to pick up your changes. Let's now go to the material and find the displacement settings in the extended rollups. Changing the height is instantaneous in the new displacement system. The midpoint value defines what height value is interpreted as the displacement's ground height. 0.5 means that mid gray is the base, so white will displace outwards and black will displace inwards. In this case we want black to be the base so the geometry is fully displaced outwards the base mesh. Tiling in displacement works the same as with any other texture map in Maverick. You may use the map's own UV transform controls. Do not forget to reload geometry after changing these values. After changing the tiling you may want to readjust the displacement's height. A very convenient way to configure displacement and its details is using our technical views. With the clay material and normal smoothing options you will very cleanly see what effect displacement is having on your geometry. Another way to adjust the tiling of displacement is via the UV mapping options of the material. This method has the advantage that the UVs affect every single map in the material at once, not just the displacement map. A third way is to apply a UV map modifier to the object with this pop-up menu in the Objects Explorer. In this case we will use a planar mapping and slide it around, change its size and see the result with the Reload Geometry button. In this next part of the tutorial we will see what we mean when we say that the new displacement system exactly preserves every single detail in your input texture. To this end we will use an Adobe Substance SBSAR material where we can increase the sampling resolution at will. Let's drop an SBSAR directly from the Windows Explorer. This will create a new material for us. Maverick will prompt you for some basic options where we will make sure to enable displacement. Let's reload geometry and here it is. Let's come closer to the geometry and go to the shaded view with clay material and normal smoothing enabled. We can very clearly see how the material is displaced at, exactly, the input map's resolution. If we now resample the SBSAR to 1K, 2K or 4K we will see how displacement captures all the new detail, without any loss or limitation. We can appreciate all the new details in the render view. We can keep fine-tuning the overall appearance, such as the displacement height.
Next we will see what we mean when we say that our new displacement system has a negligible memory usage. This scene here features a large plane. If we select it we will see at the bottom right corner that the plane is 120 meters long by 120 meters wide. Let's drop an SBSAR material and attach a UV map modifier to the plane. Let's tile it up a lot deliberately. If we come closer and crank up the displacement height. And now we go to the shaded view, we will see how displacement provides full detail all throughout the surface of the plane. Let's reload geometry and resample the SBSAR at 2K. Again, full detail all throughout the plane surface. This was unthinkable with the old brute force displacement system. Also, if we take a look at the counters panel we will see that despite the massive amount of geometric detail, the extra memory usage is basically none. This is an achievement we are extremely proud of. Let's try another material and again, a crazy level of detail at basically no warm-up time and no memory usage. Next we will see how our material importers deal with displacement. Let's start with the Substance Designer importer, which as you may know, pulls all the textures for a material automatically. All we need to do is pick one of the textures, enable displacement, and select a shader ball to present our material. Once here, we can go to the material and change the displacement height from the extended roll-ups. In the Ambience Composer you can rotate the whole ambience and then use Light Mixer to adjust each light source without re-rendering. When you're happy with the result you can consolidate your changes to the scene. The SBSAR importer works pretty much like dragging and dropping an SBSAR from the Windows Explorer. Let's pick an SBSAR file and it will be added to the scene. You can optionally generate the material swatch with the play button here. And then drop it to the scene. Do not forget to reload geometry for Maverick to pick up the new geometry. Let's try with another one and repeat what we have been doing in this tutorial. Change resolution. Preview in clay mode. Let's now try the PBR material importer. By selecting any one of the textures of a material, Maverick will automatically pull and auto-link the rest. Again, let's be sure to enable displacement. Once in the scene we may generate the material swatch and drop it to the scene. Let's now import a Quixel material with the PBR importer. In this case we will see that the PBR material importer fails to pull the sibling textures. This is because Quixel names texture maps placing the resolution in the middle of the file name, which conflicts with our importer. We may work around this by renaming the textures, by hand or using an automated file renamer.
Now the textures are all read correctly. The material is auto-created in the scene. We generate its swatch and drop it to an object. And now configure the height and appreciate the fine detail in the shaded view. Finally, we will learn how to work with procedural maps and displacement. Let's drop our material in the nodal editor. Let's create a noise map and try to plug it to the displacement slot. This type of connection is forbidden, as displacement only works with file text compatible maps. We have added a new type of map in Maverick to bake any nodal map tree into a file text compatible form. By placing a bake text node between the procedural and the displacement slot everything will work as expected. Let's adjust the displacement height. The bake text node provides different baking formats and resolutions. Don't forget to reload maps if you make changes in the procedural map for bake text to rebake and pick up the changes. Let's now create another procedural map. In this case a shape map. Again, let's plug it to the bake text node and reload geometry. Let's edit the shape map and reload maps and geometry for Maverick to pick up the changes. This is all for now. See you in the next video. Have fun rendering with Maverick.